Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So today I thought I'd do something to help some people who are struggling with watercolor. Um, doing some gradient washes and some glazing. So you see the background here of the sky is like a gradient wash. Some people struggle and they have hard edges and I'm going to go over how to, to create this and make it a little more simpler for you. Also glazing technique we're using on the foreground with the landscape part, just simple stripes going over on top of each other, creating this kind of cool abstract landscape. So if you have any questions, please, please leave them below. Let me know if you're struggling with these two techniques, um, what is the issue, and maybe I can help. Also, um, check out my Patreon. I have ad-free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials, and a live stream in the top tier. It's just a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, so let's go over some supplies. I just have a small piece of 100% cotton um, Arsh cold pressed paper. I taped it down with some Scotch magic tape on a thick piece of cardboard. Um, it's like seven by 10. Um, I'll be using my three force Princeton uh, flat wash brush velvet touch series, my um, number 10 Neptune series, because you, you just need a good round brush. Number 10 is good for that. Um, the palette and the paints, you know, we'll go over them as I use them and I have my water jars up here. So for this exercise, I'm going to re kind of like recreate a um, abstract that I did a long time ago when I kind of first started this channel and um, I didn't talk. I just did a demo and this time I'm going to talk how I did it. So kind of imagine, I'm going to grab a little a 2H pencil where you want to put, you know, depending on the size paper you have, you don't have to do the same size as me. You could do bigger, smaller, whatever. Um, where you want your sky. Do you want your sky really tall or really small? It's a good rule of thumb to do like the 30-70 rule. Like it's either 70% ground and 30% sky or 30% you know ground and 70% sky. So in my other one I had the I had the vertical way which is nice. We're going to do it the horizontal way this time. So I'm going to do 70-30 this way. So mostly sky and then a little bit of ground here, right? So you can just figure out where your horizon line is going to be and grab a ruler. So you just grab your ruler and you can just go across just for a light, you know, a light. I might go up a little bit more. I, I don't want to do 50-50. I want to do down here. It's more interesting and you want your compositions to be more interesting and not dull. I'll just go up a little bit more here. So I'll just draw my, my line across. All right, so from here down, we're going to have the sky. Now, if you don't want to bleed into this part, you could just take another piece of tape, which I'm taking here. And actually what I do with this tape is I put it on my, like my pants, get the fibers from my pants to make it less sticky and just stick it down. It just might help you um, not bleed into the other side because we don't want to bleed into this other side. There you go. So we'll be kind of, we're going to be kind of blending some colors here and basically gray and some oranges. So let's mix up some grays. Basically, if you have a gray color, I have um, Paints gray right here. I have a neutral tint also. I'm just going to water this down. So the consistency of this paint right now is basically coffee, like liquid, like coffee. If I add more water, be tea. If I add less water, we'll start to hit cream and then butter, and that that's consistency of the paint. And I want a nice orange. Now I don't want this bright, bright orange. I want a more dull orange. So I'll put the orange here. I could add some brown to it, or even a little blue. Um, I'm going to take some burnt umber. Let's see what we come up with this orange. Yeah. And you can make it even. I'm adding a little more orange back in here, a little brown. Also, you want a good amount of paint. And I've added more water. So this is kind of like a coffee tea kind of mixture. All right. So then we take our three four inch wash brush, grab some water on our brush. You don't have you don't want it dripping, but we're gonna put it across 
this whole top. You could use a bigger brush than this. I wouldn't suggest a smaller brush. It'd be very annoying. I'll grab some more water. Not super wet, but wet enough that you can manipulate the color. All right, we'll start off with the gray. I'm gonna start adding that in the top. I'm actually, my gray needs to be a little more watery. So I'm adding some more water to it. So it's like a tea consistency. And I'm holding it up like this on an angle. So it bleeds down. Now this one's running too much. We want to stop him. We want it to run down to like a nice pale gray. I'm going to add some more gray. I can get it, I want it a little bit darker on top. So this is like a gradient wash. You know, there's flat wash, there's a gradient wash, there's variegated wash. Almost like a, see, it's getting lighter as you go down here. I'm gonna keep it even lighter going down. Now going back on this side, we're gonna be adding the orange. So you grab that orange. Also, I'm gonna make some, you do wanna mix up a good amount of paint. See, I'm having to go back and you don't wanna kinda of do that, but I'm doing it, I'm going fast. I'm adding more water. So I want this orange to kinda of bleed into the gray. So you can kinda of flip it. And that will bleed down and I'll add some more water so that kinda of bleeds into the gray, a little softer. See that clanking noise? I put my brush back in the water. I've tapped off some of that. I'm kind of slowly bleeding it into the gray. See that? And I'm gonna grab my orange again. Now I'm gonna flip it back. I do want like a nice soft bleed. I'm go back in here again a little bit more. Where they overlap, it'll get a little bit darker. So you see it's kind of like a nice, gradient wash. You're not going to get this kind of sweet gradient on other papers. Like you really need a good quality cotton cold press with the tooth type paper that soaks in the water. that doesn't leave hard edges. And now I'm going to take my number 10 brush. I'm going to mix up some darker orange and less water again. So there's a bright, brilliant orange that I have. I'm going to add some burnt umber to it. I could even add some red. I have this red light here. Even a little blue, because blue and orange are opposite and they make brown. And we're gonna do some like bloom trees. So here you're just gonna tap, tap, tap with your brush. And you make these little bloom trees. Really kind of simple, but fun. I'm gonna do some bigger ones on the end. See how I'm just tip to tap, 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 tap with that color on my brush? I'm just making some nice fall bloom trees. Really simple to do. But has a nice impact and as it gets bigger and bigger. See how I'm going up with the with the dot with the tapping? It'll just get bigger and bigger. Those ones get even bigger over here. The thicker the paint, the less you know bleeding it's gonna happen. And you can even add even darker orange again. So I'm gonna add orange, maybe add some magenta, get it like a red, red, red orange. Darker still going in here. Tapping in, you can even tap in some burnt umber, which I'm doing. See, minimal water. It will kind of sit there. You can add a little paint gray to that, make it even darker. You can add some red. See that? Get those beautiful bloom orange trees. 
I'm just tapping in the deeper color. Wasn't much effort doing this. The, the bleeding does all the work itself. When it gets a little damp, when it stops to really bleed, you can play around using, I didn't mention this, but I'm mentioning it now. Grab an old credit card or a stick, or something like that. I'm gonna get even darker still here. Not too much. If it's super wet, what will happen is when you go to scrape it, the paint will kind of fold right back into the lines. So we can just test it out. Yep, it's folding right back. But then that works if you wanted to do some nice branches. Right? You could use a twig, um, even like, what do I have here? I have, yes, a nib from a fountain pen. Scrape for the branches. Zoom in so you can see better. So, scraping. See how the paint folds right back in? And yeah, there's beautiful tree branches without even having to paint. So sometimes it's much easier to draw. Look at that. Even way out here, little lines kind of floating out here. This is just fun to do. Branches, kind of does all the work for you. Make sure to make the branches kind of interesting. See, you don't want them going all like the same way. You get some nice fine ones in the ends. Spooky, spooky kind of trees. <laughs> just makes it interesting. But see, just using a tool like this, a scrapey tool. Very, very faint there. Now, if we waited till it was less damp, we could have pulled the paint off and created like almost like a birch tree. But I like this better. So I'll be sure to put this in the um, description box that I didn't mention in the beginning. But look at that. We already got the tree branches. So at this point, we leave it. Don't touch it. <laughs> Let it dry on its own, natural, so that the gradient beautiful wash stays and we don't create any hard edges, right? This is why Irish paper is important to use for this kind of stuff. Um, if you're not doing nice, beautiful gradient washes, you can use like a, you know, for, you, know you can use something else. But if you want to do this kind of technique, you really need to use a good quality paper. And the lower half, we're going to be doing a glazing technique. So we got two techniques in one today. We've got the gradient wash and with lower half, we'll have a glazing technique. So we're going to let this dry and come back. Okay, by the magic of television, <laughs> we're coming back. So now I've added some colors, as you can see on my palette here. I've added light green and a dark green. Just made light green using um, Kevin Yellow Deep and Peacock Blue. It's probably a 70-30 kind of situation where it's more yellow than blue. And then Prussian Blue and Yellow. Again, same situation, more blue than yellow, and then added a little uh, burnt umber to it. So. And then we're going to play with, we're going to still use this um, paint gray. Let's start by making the first wash across. So I'm going to use this paint gray. Good, good amount of water here. So the consistency is like tea. It's really drippy. And I did make what I wanted to note also, see how this is just a straight line. You don't have to do that. I mean, it's not really natural, but you can do more curvy if you want to do that. But I decided to just do a straight line. It's an abstract kind of. So. Take this, you know, and this is where you can get curvy. Curve, go back and down, up and down. I'll grab some more paint. I'm doing a little bit darker. And you didn't have to use the same flat wash brush. You could use a smaller flat wash brush. All right, so I did the first pass with gray. I'm going to do another one with green down here. 
Again, just wiggling up and down. Just like that. And I'm going to separate another line on the bottom. Maybe I'll do the brown. So this is brown umber. And I'm not going to touch the green. I'm going to get close to it. See that I'm leaving that space right next to it. And I'll do like, see I'm holding the brush vertical like this downward. I'll do the same thing up here. Again, you don't have to follow the same colors that I'm doing here. I'm just playing with color. This is the fun part. This is where you get to play. And you can just keep them all fat lines. You don't have to just fat and skinny. So we have to do one pass of the colors that we're going to do here and let that sit and dry. And then we're going to do another layer glazing. Okay. That layer is dry. I'm going to grab some of my dark green. I'm going to water it down a little bit. Let's see how this is going to go on top of the green. See, I'm going to go on top of the green and the white in between. Now that part in the first pass was kind of really dark. So you can't really see the green underneath that, that well, but that's okay. You can see the brown coming through. And lift it up a little bit here. But you see when it goes on top of the other color, it gets darker. Let's try a little orange. Let's bring the, or we can even do yellow, but I'm gonna try the orange again. And I have a dirty brush, so it's gonna make dirty orange. I'll go back and add some bright orange to brighten it up a little bit. So we're gonna go with the brown and the green. I watered it down a little too much. There we go. See that? Kind of cool. So you get these different color tones when you pass the orange on top of that. And we can do it again on top of these two. Isn't that really cool? Makes the coolest stripes. So now I'm gonna have to let all this dry again if I wanna do another pass. Okay, so that's dry. See, there's a little bit bleed here because I probably didn't let it dry. These ones are nice sharp edges that dried, and this one's a little bleeding here, but that's okay. Doesn't really bother me. I'm gonna do another pass of the gray. I want it kind of like a spooky kind of look. I'm gonna go back up here. Get the dark. I'm see. I'm kind of. I'm holding the brush and kind of twisting it like this. Cause then I can get some twisty bumps going like that. See that? And I could take that gray and water it down fairly wet and go over all these too. So it's not white anymore. It's got this gray tone and that green got a little darker. You see that? Maybe I'll make this one lighter. Add some more gray back. All this stuff you guys play around with and see which one you like the most. And if the orange seems so light and you don't like it, you can go back in and add another pass of that. It's a little brighter. Isn't that fun? So this really simple design and it ended up being like skinnier lines. Maybe I would have done some fatter ones, you know, um, depending on how you wanted to do it. So you let this dry, but I'm just going to pull it apart to see how it looks because I feel like it's finished in my point opinion. Um, if I go any more, maybe I would add, let me see, I'm going to add one more pass. The green, the lime green. See what happens if I go in here. Ooh, yeah, I kind of like that. All right, so now I'm done and I'll just remove the tape. This is the best part because it's like an instant frame of your picture. If it's fairly wet, wait till the 
the whole painting is dry before you move the tape so that the image doesn't get buckled. But I just love it. It's really pretty, really simple. Um, if you did a big one, you can cut this whole thing up into a bunch of pieces for a bookmark, bookmarks to give to people, or even just cut this in half. And you can do, you know, you frame two pictures, give them for gifts, or just frame two pictures on your wall. Really simple, really fun. Bunch of a couple of techniques. You got the gradient wash, like the soft blending wash, and then we have our glazing technique here, where you see different colors shine through when you put another color on top of each other. So I hope that was fun. Uh, let me know what you think. Do you enjoy doing stuff like that? Are you struggling to make a soft gradient wash? It really helps with the paper. Take a little patience. See how I flipped it over. I don't want to put them in right into each other real quickly. You do this really slow. So leave a comment below. See if you're, you know, if you do, if you liked radiant washes, if you like to do the glazing, and uh, love to hear from you. So thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I hope you enjoyed this abstract um, autumn landscape. Take care, and I'll speak to you soon.